Justin Brierly, host and creator of the Unbelievable podcast and YouTube channel, has a video called Why, After 10 Years of Talking with Atheists, I'm Still a Christian. As an atheist myself, I have some concerns about Justin's arguments and about his listening skills. Justin Brierly is still a Christian because he thinks Christianity is the best explanation for three things. Human existence, human value, and human purpose. We've already addressed human existence, so now let's talk about human value. Now I want to go to my second piece of evidence for you. I think God makes sense of human value. To help illustrate what he means by human value, Justin is going to tell a story about a time and place where humans were not valued. In this story, homeless children were being killed in the street by the police of that country, because the officers viewed the children as vermin. Of course, we, the audience, react with shock and horror to this story, and Justin's question at the end of it is, why? And I'm sure, like me, you find that story both incredibly disturbing and inspiring. Disturbing that people could treat kids like that. Inspiring because of what Jane did. We react with horror at the idea that people could be treated as disposables. But then I think we have to ask ourselves the question, why? Why do we believe that human life should be valued? Why did Jane do the right thing? Now, this is where things get tricky because Justin's question, why, can mean two different things. Why do we react with horror? Or, why should we react with horror? Why do we value humans? Or, why should we value humans? Descriptive or prescriptive? Explanation or justification? These are two different questions that Justin might be asking. In his book, Justin seems to emphasize the prescriptive question more, while in his talk, he seems to emphasize the descriptive question more. In the end, he kind of asks both questions in a haphazard kind of way. Why do we believe that human life should be valued? Why did Jane do the right thing? Now, the fact is, on atheism, I've struggled to find an answer to this question of why we value human life this way. Because if all that's going on in reality is matter in motion and a random force of evolution producing all the different life we have on Earth, then we're just one more randomly produced piece of life on Earth. There's nothing particularly special about us. Why should we uh, intrinsically think that we're more valuable than the louse? So why do we value human life? Or why should we value human life? Is Justin asking for an explanation or a justification? Well, it seems like he's asking for both, so let's give him both barrels. To the question, why should we value each other, and why ought we not murder children in the street, I would direct Justin to my two-part video, The Moral Argument for God Proves Nothing. Basically, my answer is, it is very difficult for anyone to construct a convincing prescriptive moral framework. This is because the other person can just keep challenging your justifications with the same why question over and over until you finally reach a justification which is itself unjustified. Everyone's value system is susceptible to this kind of foundational problem. For example, if there is no God, then why ought we not murder? Because murder causes unnecessary suffering? Well, why is it bad to cause unnecessary suffering? Is that just what it means for something to be bad? That's not very convincing. But, Christians, if there is a God, then why ought we not murder? Because murder doesn't reflect God's nature? Okay, but why ought our actions reflect God's nature? Is that simply what it means for something to be bad? Just because? As I think you can see, neither foundation is particularly concrete or convincing. So, to return to Justin Brierley's question of why should we value human life in a prescriptive sense, I don't claim to have a particularly compelling answer, but neither does Justin or anyone else, because no matter what justification someone gives, 
you can simply keep asking why, and you can show that every person's foundation is kind of arbitrary. If this is what Justin means by his why question, then Justin needs to hold himself to the same standard and provide his solution to the potentially infinite chain of why ought we questions, which he does not do in his talk or in his book. Justin's accusation that atheists cannot account for human value in a prescriptive sense is a philosophical check that his own worldview cannot cash. So that's my basic answer to the prescriptive question about human value. Why ought we value each other? Now let's move on to the descriptive question about human value. Why do we value each other? Which Justin seems to emphasize more in his talk than in his book. Now, the fact is, on atheism, I've struggled to find an answer to this question of why we value human life this way. We know there's something about being human that means that you have to treat someone a certain way, don't we? What explains that feeling? What explains that idea that we have this inherent dignity and value? Where does that come from? To the question, why do we value each other, and why do we react with horror to the idea of murdering children in the street, well, that's easy. Humans evolved as a social species, which inclined us to behave altruistically toward each other. We instinctively value other humans because this feeling of value gave our ancestors a survival advantage in our evolutionary past. Now, there is a lot more detail I could go into, such as why we value some people more than others, and why we act tribalistically, but fundamentally, in general, we tend to value other humans because this instinct better enabled our ancestors to reproduce. This is how I would explain our feeling of human value and our feelings about how we should treat other people. In fact, one of the coolest things about the theory of evolution, like any modern scientific theory, is that we can test this explanation. If our intuitions about how we should treat each other really are a survival strategy, then we should be able to simulate them and see if these behaviors actually promote an individual's survival. You can test this by pitting computer programs against each other in resource games like the classic Prisoner's Dilemma, and it turns out that treating others the way you want to be treated, the golden rule, is one of the most effective survival strategies, if not the most effective strategy. Future Veniloid here, slight correction, the winning strategy is actually called tit-for-tat, which cooperates in the first round, and then it does whatever its opponent did in the previous round indefinitely. It's not exactly the golden rule per se, it's more like reciprocity, but my argument remains the same regardless. This explains not only our sense of value for each other, but it also explains our sense of justice and vengeance when people don't value each other. It is this kind of testable prediction which makes the theory of evolution a fantastic explanation for our moral feelings, including our feelings of value for each other. Now, Justin does respond to the argument that our feelings about human value are products of our evolutionary past, but it's an incredibly weak response that borders on question begging. Justin's response is basically that, well, we just know that these feelings are not the products of evolution. We just know that there is some greater explanation. Why? Well, because we just feel really strongly about it. I managed to get hold of my very first interview with Richard Dawkins, probably the most famous atheist on the planet. And I managed to get my 10 minutes with him, and we had a conversation about human value. And I finished by saying, OK, but ultimately, your belief that rape is wrong is as arbitrary as the fact we've developed five fingers rather than six. And he said, you could say that, yes. And you could say that. And actually, I think if you're a thoroughgoing atheist, you should say that. But why do we feel that's so wrong? Why do we know that, that there's a reason we shouldn't treat people that way? Why do we feel somehow in our bones, recoil at the idea that our moral belief that rape is wrong is that just the happenstance of the hand that evolution happens to have dealt, dealt us? No, we know that it's not the story. We know there's something about being human that means that you have to treat someone a certain way, don't we? 
So basically, we know that these feelings are not the products of evolution because we feel them really strongly, because we just know that these feelings couldn't be any other way. I'm sorry, Justin, but that is a ridiculous answer, and I honestly can't believe that you think someone would be convinced by it. You cannot simply read metaethics and ontology off of your emotions and call it a day. Feels don't equal reals. You might as well argue that, because we really feel like matter isn't mostly empty space, therefore it's not mostly empty space, and this is how we just know that atomic theory must be wrong. This argument is so bad, it's almost not even an argument, it's just an assertion of personal incredulity. Justin thinks that our feelings of value toward each other are not products of evolution because we just know it. Really, Justin? So those are my answers to the questions of why we value human life. But now I'd like to take a look at Justin's answers to these same questions. Specifically, his answer to the descriptive question, which he emphasizes more in his talk. On Christianity, what is Justin's explanation for why we do value human life in this way? What explains that idea that we have this inherent dignity and value? Where does that come from? Again, Christianity has a ready answer. You have inherent dignity and value because you are made in the image of God. And that gives you inestimable value. In fact, God values you so much he came in person to die for you. I mean, you cannot get a statement of greater value of what a human life is worth than that. So it doesn't matter if you're a billionaire living in a penthouse or you're a street kid in the streets of Bogota, you have value and nothing else can change that. That's the Christian story. That's why I believe we have this sense that we have human value. It's because we're made in the image of God. So according to Justin, the reason we think humans have value is because, being made in the image of God, humans really do have some objectively real characteristic called value, which we simply recognize about each other. And so, if we want to believe true things about the world, then we should believe that humans have value because it is objectively true that they do. Why should we uh, intrinsically think that we're more valuable than the louse? You have inherent dignity and value because you are made in the image of God. My first issue with Justin's explanation of why we value each other is the fact that, as far as I'm concerned, value is not an inherent property which things can have. Value is just a description of how a subject regards an object or another subject. We say that an object has value, but this is just a simple way of saying a subject values it, or a subject desires for it to exist. Inherent value is a nonsensical property. Value is, by definition, a subjective evaluation. It simply doesn't make sense for Justin to assert that humans have inherent value, which we simply observe about each other, because that's not a real thing. My second issue with Justin's explanation of why we value each other is the fact that his explanation is compatible with literally any value judgments we might intuitively make. On Christianity, no matter what our moral intuitions might be, no matter how much or how little we valued human life, you could just say, well, God just wanted it that way. There's no constraint on what we should expect to see. The God explanation is infinitely flexible which makes it a bad explanation. Now, you might want to respond that, on the hypothesis that God made us, we would necessarily have inherent value, because God is the one who made us, and this provides a specific constraint on what we should expect to see. Humans cannot fail to have value if God made us, and it just so happens that we do see value in each other. Therefore, God is a good explanation for human value. The problem with this response is that, even if this proposed constraint was not something we observed in the real world, even if we didn't see value in each other, you could still explain this by appealing to God. Sure, maybe we can't help but have inherent value if God made us, but couldn't God have simply made us unable to recognize this value in each other? Surely this would be entirely possible for God to have done. 
Maybe he could have done this directly, or maybe he could have done it through original sin or total depravity or the fact that he works in mysterious ways. You really can just make up anything you like. No matter what we find ourselves believing about human value, well, God just set it up that way, don't you know? God just made it so that we don't recognize our inherent value. The God explanation is still infinitely flexible, which, once again, strongly suggests that it is a bad explanation. This is unlike the theory of evolution, where if we saw absolutely no value in each other, or even negative value, that would be pretty much impossible to explain as an evolved survival strategy. This is why the theory of evolution is a good explanation for our feelings of human value. But God is a bad explanation. And so, for all these reasons, God is not the best explanation for human value. Justin's prescriptive challenge to atheists, asking why ought we value each other, appeals to a problem that he hasn't even answered on his own worldview. Meanwhile, Justin's descriptive challenge to atheists about why we should value each other can be easily answered by the theory of evolution, whereas Christian theism could explain literally any moral intuition we might have. And as the cherry on top, Justin assumes that value is an intrinsic property that things can have, which I think is nonsensical to begin with. Not only is God a bad explanation for human value, but the fact that Justin Brierley can't seem to decide if he's asking for a prescriptive account or a descriptive account, along with his inability to understand the parallel prescriptive dilemmas between Christianity and atheism, and his failure to even mention the subjective nature of value in the first place, really makes it sound like he hasn't been listening these past 10 years. That's all for part three. Make sure you recognize the inherent value of this channel by subscribing and enabling notifications so you don't miss part four.